So let's look, let's look at the long run equilibrium. So equilibrium occurs at point E right here. And it's the intersection of the long run aggregate supply curve with the short run aggregate supply curve and then the long run aggregate demand curve. And so this long run equilibrium at this point tells us the price level. And we know that the output at the long run is always at potential GDP. Now let's look and see what happens with demand pull inflation. So demand pull inflation is inflation that occurs when the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right for some reason. So let's suppose that uh, people just believe that the economy is going to pick up so they start spending more. So it shifts the aggregate demand curve to the right. So what we have then in the short run while wages are fixed is a new equilibrium at point C. And so we have price level has gone up to PC and then we have real GDP has increased to GDPC so what we have here is what we call inflationary gap that is the economy is larger than it is at, at its potential so again in the short run prices have gone up so firms are receiving more revenue however wages are fixed so they're earning more profit so then they begin to hire more employees they expand their production and increase their production so in the short run we move from a point E to point C. Now in the long run however though we know that wages eventually will become flexible once wage contracts go up and so once the wages have increased firms begin to decrease production. However as they decrease production we move along the new aggregate demand curve and so we'll move in this direction and so we'll end up at a point like D back on our long run aggregate supply curve. And in essence what's happened is as the wages increase this aggregate supply curve is actually shifted back because we know that if there's a rise in the input cost that it reduces the aggregate supply or shifts it left. So once that wage change occurs this shifts left and so we move from point C to point D. We end up that our final long run result is that we have an increase in the price level eventually from PE to PD and the size of the economy hasn't changed so in the long run what ends up happening is we just have an increase in price level. So this is why governments will want if they see the economy <clears throat> beyond its potential or in other words an inflationary gap well they want to slow things down because they know eventually in the long run all it will do is lead to an increase in the price level. Now let's look at cost push inflation. So cost push inflation occurs when there's some sort of input cost increase much like in the 70s when energy prices uh, skyrocket. And so what it does is it shifts the aggregate supply curve to the left. And result in the short run is that we move from a point like E to a point like A and prices increase. <clears throat> now what happens though is we're in a recessionary gap. Now what uh, firms or what <clears throat> governments would typically want to do would be to increase aggregate demand but in doing so if they increase aggregate demand all we're going to do is increase prices again. So there's a bit of a policy dilemma here is there may be high unemployment because the output is dropped to this point here of GDP A. However if you increase demand once uh, the supply curve is shifted left, we'll just end up at a higher price. So we'll end up at a price level of PC if they increase demand to the right. So that's why governments are hesitant if there is to shift it to a point like AD1 because we know that it'll end up just at, at higher prices than we were off uh, <clears throat> in the first place. Now the alternative is to do nothing and that we do know that in the short run it'll go to A to point A but then as the price level has gone up and wage contracts are renegotiated they'll be renegotiated at a later wage and then the aggregate supply curve will end up shifting right and then we'll end up back at equilibrium. So it's a bit of a policy dilemma. This shift however could take quite a while before wages drop enough to shift it back and so we'd have exterior, extended periods of time of unemployment.